Okay, I thought I'd show you some old radio broadcast equipment that I picked up. I plan on uh, putting together a Part 15 AM radio station so I can finally hear oldies and old-time radio programs, etc., etc., over my old AM-only radios, and now I won't be limited to uh, to the uh, political talk and the religious stations that dominate the AM market around here. This particular piece of equipment is a Broadcast Electronics, or BE for short, four-channel mono audio mixer. This is really the heart of the whole system. This is what the DJ uses to mix various program sources into the output which goes out over the air. This is how a DJ is able to talk over a record or fade one record out while fading another record in, etc., etc. This is this is how it's done. This will be your channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4, and, and these are your input select keys for each channel. You can hook up to two sources per channel, so say for channel 2, for example, center position off, I could hook a CD player to this side, turntable to this side, and this is your level control, and the object is to obtain a level which lands somewhere here in 0 VU range. If you have your level too low, you'll have weak output. If the level is too high and, and runs up into the red, you could have distortion. Okay, each channel has a Q position. And what that is, when, it, when the channel is in, a Q, in the Q position, it feeds that particular source through a Q amplifier and through a built-in Q speaker inside the console. That way the DJ can cue a record or tape up and only he or she can hear what's going on. The folks at home will not hear his actions. And these controls up here control your master volume, monitor volume, Q volume, headphone volume, etc. Open this up and let you have a look at it. Uh, there's your Q speaker, power supply. This controls, this is where all your inputs and outputs connect. Of course, this is the AC power cord. So there's the uh, Broadcast Electronics 4-channel mono mixer. Okay, let's see what other goodies I can round up. Okay, next in the junk pile is a is an old uh, tape caster cart machine. This particular machine will play and record, and this is a cart. As you can see, it looks similar to an old 8-track tape, but there are some differences. Whereas an 8-track tape has a built-in pinch roller, that roller is not found in the, in, inside the uh, broadcast cart tape. The roller is found inside of the machine itself. These carts are typically used to record commercials, station IDs, promo spots, public service announcements. In some cases, even music. Some car some stations would dub their records to cart, and that way the cart tape could be played over the air and save wear and tear on the record. This machine, in order to play a cart, you just place it in the machine like that, pull the lever up, and then whenever you're ready to play, you hit the start button. I'd say this machine was probably made in the late 60s. Okay, there's the old tape caster cart machine. Okay, I think I've got some more junk here that I'm, I can...
Okay, here are a couple of old broadcast turntables. Back in the day, most radio stations uh, played records. That was before the days of CDs and digital files. Most stations had at least two turntables in the control room, so while one record was playing, the operator would have another record queued up on the second turntable ready to go. Okay, the turntable on the left is a RecoCut B12-71, which actually I think was built by QRK. The tone arm on it is a Microtrack 303. And this particular toe in the RecoCut turntable, according to date codes, was built in 74. Here's a very similar Sparta turntable with an old broken Shure M232 tone arm on it, which will likely need to be replaced. This particular turntable was built in 1969, according to date codes that I found. And it also looks like it was made by QRK. Okay, let's see if I can find anything else. Okay, here's a Collins turntable preamp from, I believe, 1966. This is a solid state mono unit, and it connects between the turntable and the audio console. Its purpose is to boost the weak signal from a magnetic turntable cartridge to a more robust line level signal that the console wants to see. I only have one of these, so I may just end up having to use a couple of generic El Cheapo phono preamps for my operation since I plan on using at least two turntables. The nice thing about this one is it has selectors for various uh, equaliz equalization positions such as uh, RIAA and high cut, low cut, etc. The purpose for that is to compensate for worn records. Okay, I think I've got a few more turntables I can show you. Here's a Gates model CB1200 broadcast turntable with Microtrack 303 tone arm, probably from the early 70s. And back here are two Collins turntables, the blue one you've seen in a previous video, the other one you've never seen, but it's basically the same turntable, and unfortunately it's missing most of the tone arm. Those are the two turntables that I'd like to restore and use for on-air use, and of course I'm going to repaint both of them to match. All of these turntables need a complete restoration, including new rubber parts, etc., 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 but I think it's doable. And here are the two turntables that I currently use, although they really need to be restored. You've seen them before, but here they are again. A left is a Rusco Qmaster. The right one is a QRK Model 12C. And these will be where a great majority of our program material comes from. Uh, 45 RPM records and the larger 12 inch 33 and a third RPM records. I'll also have a computer set up to run automation because obviously I can't listen to my radios if I'm uh, stuck at the control board doing a program. So uh, there will be a computer also. And our transmitter will be an, an AM, an SS Tran Part 15 transmitter. Okay, I'm about out of time, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.